would like to go on, uh, if I may, uh, to Ben and ask about what the wind energy uh, industry is doing. And of course, they are expanding rapidly, which means that waste associated with decommissioned turbines is set to grow. So how is the industry responding to that? Is the circular economy approach seen in general as a boon or potentially as a burden? And if you like, also, please feel free to reference that poll result we just saw. Thank you very much, uh, Melinda, and uh, thank you, Director General, Your Excellencies, uh, my fellow speakers, esteemed colleagues. Um, good afternoon. Um, I mean, to answer your question, Melinda, I mean, achieving sustainability for the wind industry is, is an absolute uh, must. I mean, our investors and customers and the public and society will not, you know, will not tolerate an industry which, on the one hand, you know, is decarbonizing and playing a major role in carbon mitigation, but on the other hand, it's causing environmental uh, damage. Um, so the, the industry is moving very proactively um, to change the important processes uh, which are in discussion here. And, and to be very clear about that, uh, 90, uh, we, our supply chain is quite different from that of solar. 90% um, of the materials which make up the mass of a wind turbine are already recyclable um, and can be put into commercial recycling chains. Uh, so undoubtedly, you know, as we move towards um, uh, end of life for a, for a growing amount of turbines, and it's quite a significant amount by 2030 already, um, that creates um, really a ready-made revenue stream um, as the circular economy itself and as uh, waste streams and the um, commercial recycling of those waste streams grow um, as, as part of the economy. Um, the part which is requires most action is the blade of the wind turbine, which represents 10% uh, of the mass. Uh, and the reason for this is that it's made up of layers of composite materials, often uh, layered with other materials such as balsa wood um, and combined with other materials, which, which means that um, it's quite hard to separate into commercial waste streams. Um, and then uh, uh, you know, what's happened is that this is, although they are non-toxic and safe for landfill, that's obviously not an acceptable solution. Um, and so you know, that, part of the, that part of the production that's gone into landfill needs to be eliminated. Um, now the in industry is taking a very proactive um, uh, approach to this. Uh, there are a number of um, important uh, consortium that have been formed, such as the Decom Blades Consortium that was established in 2021 that brings together 10 uh, leading manufacturers and energy producers um, in, the, in the industry with technical and academic institutions. And that aims to rapidly commercialize the value chain for the recycling of wind turbine blades, in particular through new technologies around shredding blades using shredded uh, in concrete production and separating composite material under high temperatures. And these efforts are already bearing fruit, as can be seen in developments such as Siemens Gamesa, as uh, launch of the first fully recyclable uh, wind turbine last year um, with a new uh, resin that can be more easily separated to recover materials. Um, and we're seeing this across um, uh, the industry. There's a proactive engagement of associations with their counterparts in the chemical um, uh, industry. And it's going to require collaboration across sectors uh, with other industries which are dependent on composites, such as construction, electronics, uh, transport and shipping. Um, and a larger and more diversified waste stream will strengthen the business case uh, for uh, circularity. So um, we certainly um, are taking this very, very seriously and moving rapidly uh, to change our own practices. We welcome uh, the discussion around legislation um, and standards. That's an ongoing discussion, which obviously happens on a regional and national level. Uh, we would like to see common standards across regions and countries uh, so that we have a real level playing field for the wind turbine supply chain and, and for the economy of wind energy. Um, so we would hope to see standards um, and legislation being, you know, being harmonized across, across regions. And we very much welcome that discussion. We don't see it as something that we're, we're frightened of or, or are kind of reticent to engage in, but it needs to be done in the right way. Um, and just a final point, I mean, you know, our, the economics of the supply chain are under uh, significant pressure at the moment. Uh, because of the way that energy markets are set up, uh, where actually fossil fuels 
are benefiting far more from from energy markets in many ways than than, than the renewable energy supply chain. So something needs to change on the economics there as well, because we need to invest large amounts in R&D uh, and, and improving and upgrading production facilities. So there's a wider discussion there around where where does the cost go and who bears uh, uh, the cost and, and things need to change in energy markets as we move towards ramping up uh, to meet uh, net zero. So I'll leave it there. Um, but we are you know, engaged and uh, uh, see this um, discussion as absolutely vital as, as we ramp up. Uh, to meet the uh, IRENA um, 1.5 degree target in, in, in the coming years. Thank you. Perhaps just the quickest follow-up question based on the audience poll, because you talked about both reuse and recycling. What about our third category? It was the one that uh, got the least uh, uh, response uh, from for, on the poll, but uh, efficiency improvements, uh, designing for uh, a reduced uh, material use and or circularity. And by the way, we also have an audience question coming in on that. How does the industry see that? Yeah, I, did, I didn't go into it uh, because of you know, the three minutes that I had. Um, <laughs> I, really only, I really only talked about blades. Uh, How about they, in one minute more? One, one minute well, more to mention that. There's, there's, there's all other areas which, again, are really interesting. I mean, what about steel, which is our biggest? component and, and how do we make green green steel so how do we change the production process for steel using things like hydrogen is a fascinating area and also a business opportunity for us because we we can sell the electrons to make the hydrogen so i mean there's lots of opportunities around the product the wider production process the components uh, we use there's companies now uh, like modvian in sweden who are making wooden large-scale uh, recyclable uh, wooden uh, towers made from sustainable forestry. So there's all kinds of initiatives and opportunities around the wider um, production of the turbine and, and efficiency, as you say, Melinda, um, as well, and using lighter materials, new, new materials, and so on and so on. So it's really uh, you know, what we see as a, as a great opportunity and as the kind of next frontier, really, for where we go as an industry in the next uh, few decades. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And